what we're going to do is we're going to get a skewer. We're going to pick, 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 pick. We're going to turn it upside down, run it through this sieve, and collect the honey in that bowl. Okay, so we ready? So what's the instructions on this? Just, just uh, this is one. Oh, oh, just random. Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought it was specific pods and not to go through it. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to turn it upside down. We're just going to cut out a bit of this. So do you just cut it in segments? This, I'm just going to cut it so we can get it out. Uh, Put it on one side. Oops. Okay, so now I'm going to lift this hive up. I'm going to put it here. Now all the bees that are getting caught up in this sieve, they're fine. They'll be able to fly away, no problems. So the reason I've opened up this part of the hive like this is it makes it easier for the honey to get to the bottom of the hive to run out. There's a lot more honey in here, but if you just want to call it quits... Well, I don't want to disturb their life too much, so... But, you know, you, you're the bee expert. Okay, we're going to go a bit more then. Murderer! <laughs> <laughs> so we've got that wax left over, and we put that back in for them to use. No, no, we'll keep that. We're going to boil that up, and we're going to make something for the dig players. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leave it like this. The idea is I'm going to let the, the honey accumulate. Oh, it's like a cave. Hmm. Now, if you really want maximum honey, you take all of that out. But of course, that makes a lot more work for the bees. I'm then going to lift this strainer and put it over this. So this is just going to quickly go here. We've got this one. Now I'm just going to pour this into here. Okay. So now we could put it in your little jar if you want. I've got two bees I'm going to have to rescue. Bees are active. The temperature needs to be 18 degrees or more for them to be active. And it's going to be good like this for months and months. Create our own label. So how much do you reckon you got? I mean, we could have harvested a lot 400 more. 400 grams? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. Well, in a hive, you get about, they reckon, five to 10,000 bees. They live for about two months. About 300 are hatched a day. So it's a bit like sort of donating blood. It's not a problem. As long as you don't do, donate too much. If we lost a thousand bees, it doesn't matter. Do they die outside or in? Yeah, the it's sort of sad the way they die. Their wings actually uh, shred and they can't fly anymore. So now I'm going to tap the bees and get rid of them, let them go free. Let the bees escape. That's good. Now we're going to make a mouthpiece for a didgeridoo. Okay. Can we put that on the stove and boil it, please? Okay. What happens is the wax is completely mixed in with the water. As the water cools, the wax is going to rise to the top and you're going to get a disc of relatively pure native bee wax. And that's what people can use for the mouthpiece of their didgeridoos. The trouble is, there's not much beeswax around. So the hive is back together again. Okay, we won't seal it up until this evening to let any bees get back into their little hive. The bees have fantastic defences against uh, intruders to the hive as long as they can limit their access. So of course when you open the hive and now we're putting the honey collector back, we want to make sure that it's as secure as possible. So I'm just going to run this really thin bit of uh, masking tape around the join, nice and safe. Well, this is just like every cooking show I've ever seen. You get a a whole lot of family and friends and you all gather around saying, this is the best meal I've ever eaten. I want to see a cooking show where people gag on the food. <laughs> yeah. Some people are allergic to this. I've seen people die within a couple of seconds.